my dear friends. I am really excited for you guys to hear me and Amber go on today. I just wanted to give you an update that her book is now coming out on April 26th. This was filmed back in February, so some of the timeline might be a little funky, but the pre-order link is still in the bio, I mean, in the description of this video. So go support her, pre-order her, her book, and get excited for April 26th. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a series that is kind of in conjuncture with Maggie maybe reading on TikTok, but it's going to be called Making Mischief. And I'm going to just be talking to the book talkers we love who are creating their own stories and who are authors. And today we have Amber and Nicole with us. Hello, Amber. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Um, so we're going to be talking about the book of Azrael today. And first, I just kind of want you to introduce yourself. Tell me how you got involved in book talk in the first place. Um, kind of if you were writing before book talk or if it made you want to write. Um, so I'm Amber. Um, I joined book talk maybe a year ago. Um, I didn't post anything about like my writing or stuff like that. Um, I had actually found it through Oh, who was it? It was someone on, it was someone on book talk. I don't think they're on there right now anymore, but I'd found it through there. And I was like, wait, we're all talking about reading. It's not like this, you know, taboo thing, you know, in high school and people are like, oh wait, you read books, you know? Um, and so kind of blew it from there. Um, and then I decided with the book that I wrote now, um, I actually wanted to get it published, um, because I had been working on this for about two years almost. Um, uh, and I was like, you know what? I need to really get serious about it. Like, I love this story as it is. Um, I do want to share it. And I found a lot of friends that are interested in the same stuff I am. And I was like, why not? Um, so that's kind of where that started. Um, I was a part a, of a Greek mythology blog um, for a couple years. And it's pretty much like um, Greek gods meet like, you know, modern day. And so I was writing with that. And then before that, just, I mean, college um, I did a lot of English classes in college and before that I was doing like little short stories. You, um, so tell me more about this book itself. Is, is it fantasy? Which genre are we working with? What age range? Um, fantasy, I, so I kind of, I don't know exactly where to classify that. I definitely like, I get more different vibes. So for the reason why I'm saying that is because like it's fantasy for sure. Um, I want to say dark romance in the fact that it deals with a lot of subject matter that's very adult. Um, so I definitely would say 18 plus. Um, and I'll have trigger warnings and stuff like that, like on my uh, website, my publishing house has. Um, so people know before they get into it. But um, yeah, I mean, I made up this whole world, this, it's, it has its magic system, it has its rules, but they're very, like, low key in a way, so it's nothing that's going to make you, your brain want to explode, but at the same time, it explains it in a way that you can still go with the story and still have fun, um, so yeah, um, yeah, I mean, definitely fantasy for sure, um, we have swords, we have, uh, dragons, you know, <laughs> magic, All the essentials. we have the things we need, all the essentials, yeah, <laughs> Great. And I, so I like to do at the beginning of these, just like if in 15 seconds, I'll give you 30, if it stresses you out, you wanted mm -hmm. to just pitch your book. If you could say like, we're just going to start like someone you've never met, you're in an elevator with them. This is your like 15 to 30 second elevator pitch. I'm going to, I'm starting your timer. Okay. You uh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, let me actually get to the seconds and go. Um, elevator pitch. Here we go. Um, if you love enemies to lovers, but you want a twist or instead of the, uh, main guy is the bad guy. Instead it's the girl and the main good person is the guy. I have the book for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of where I would go. I probably don't need 15 seconds, but that's like, I was about to say, no, that <laughs> was perfect. You still had like 30 seconds to go. That's, that was perfect. that's yeah, my that's, bitch. I love the role reversal. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, love a good gender swap. <laughs> yeah, especially with that, I read a book the other day that was um, gender swapping the um, who hurt you, like where mm -hmm. it's the trope where it's instead of a girl being hurt and the guy was like, who hurt you, I will hurt them. Mm -hmm. It was the girl. The guy got yes, I love that. Yeah. Back and I was like, <laughs> this is what I like to see. Yeah, that's exactly my whole basis when I went into it. When I thought of the story, I was like, it would be fun to see it from a different perspective, you know, and not bashing on anyone who has or writes that, uh, you know, who hurt you type from the male perspective, because I 
I mean, we love it. We eat it up. But I was like, I really just want to see the girl be the one that's like unfreaking hinged. And the guy be like, hold on, hold on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I love that. Tell me, so you told me it was a fantasy world. Tell me a little bit about the world. Um, so basics without spoiling, um, think of it as how the universe itself is. So I have different realms is what they're called. Um, you have the other world, which is a type of realm. And that's where you'd find a, like the baddies kind of thing. Um, and the other world itself is in itself, I guess, a smaller form of a universe. So you have different planets in that you have the ether world, which is the middle, which would you could consider where like earth and stuff was if earth was on there. Um, and that's where you kind of see Diana's world, you know, where she grew up and stuff. Um, and then you have the nether world, which is another realm itself with, um, that's where, Mostly the gods had lived in more peaceful creatures. So it's always been kind of like this whole separation thing. And so when you get into the book, um, you're really stuck in the ether world. Like you don't know anything about the other world. You don't know anything about the nether world. You just know they exist. Um, and when you start reading, you find out why um, and kind of go from there. So uh, I made up this whole world, like I said. Um, there's ways that they handle like transportation, you know, instead of like, you know, strictly cars, um, they have like convoys, they have a bunch of other stuff um, because uh, Liam's world, I guess in a way kind of affected there. So technology is a little bit more advanced, um, but at the same time, a lot of stuff you can see here and know that you can kind of compare to real world in a way. Okay, no, that makes sense. And these, so you mentioned um, Liam and Diana, tell me a little bit mm -hmm. about the like characters we're following through this. Okay, so they're my two main um, protagonists, even though I guess Diana would be more considered an antagonist. Um, Diana, to start with, you know, um, I really wanted this badass female character, um, but at the same time, I wanted, like I, like I said, like I wanted this from like a female perspective, female villain perspective, and so you have her um, who, in her own way, you know, like cares almost too much to a point you know what I mean so the basis of the story is she gives up her life so to speak to save her sister back in like their home world well their home um, in Aurora uh, which is like this desert um, this play kind of sweeps through her sister's like not gonna make it kind of deal and she prays to anyone that will listen and it's not someone good <laughs> and so you know she ends up kind of giving her life so her sister will, you know, live, but in turn works for this person um, who she's like, okay, tell me what to do. I'll do it as long as my sister's happy and healthy or whatever. And so that's kind of where you meet and get into like her world. Um, and then you have Liam who is, which I have told someone else before, he is my gender bent Buffy in a way, <laughs> because like, he's all like law and justice and peace. And like, there has to be order or there's chaos, you know, um, to a T, you know, this self-righteous person, but because that's what he grew up in knew because he's supposed to be like this protector. And so um, you learn a lot about him when he has to go to the ether world because something happens and then the two meet and it's just, it's, it's fun. <laughs> so I really like that whole push and pull of like this chaotic unhinged, you know, quote unquote evil person with this person who just believes like, hey, we can't just do that, you know? And so yeah. it's fun to kind of bounce off of. Totally. And are there any other characters uh, surrounding them? You mentioned Diana's sister. Um, yeah. Anybody else that you're, you were excited that you were writing about or are we? Yeah, I have. Um, so I love them all, which I feel like every author kind of says, but it's true. I mean, even the bad ones. Um, and that was kind of the thing with going into this. Like, I know that a lot of people are going to connect to other ones. And when I was pitching the story or talking about it, you know, as being like a villain type deal, um, I really just wanted to push the envelope with the whole series to, to see what people considered villainy and what people would consider like more morally gray and see what they attach to. So for example, on Diana's side, the person that she follows and like listens to is named Caden. So he's kind of in charge and runs everything. And then you have two other characters on, actually you have a list and I just didn't want to give it all like, you know, I feel like I'm throwing names out of people. I didn't want to confuse them, but you have like a bunch of people like on her side that to the other world will seem bad, but to her, she's like, oh, these are my friends, you know, like so-and-so has to eat this to survive. And so-and-so has to do this, to survive. you know what I mean? Like, it just depends on what you believe in kind of thing. And then you get to Liam's side and um, my favorite characters to write for him are called The Hand. Um, and what that is, is kind of like his guards, I guess, in a way. 
Um, because in the netherworld, when it comes to like the gods and deities, they all had their type of guards or wardens or like, you know, right hand staff kind of thing. Um, and so with his, I liked him because it's like, they're funny, they're badass, but at the same time, like that there's close knit family kind of thing. So um, that was pretty fun. So I'm just excited to see kind of who buys with who. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think the the fun part that you're talking about is just what my favorite thing to read is, which is all of <laughs> those like, evil, villainy, morally gray things that everyone has a justification to. It's kind of like, it all depends yeah. on the lens you're seeing, you're looking mm-hmm. at. It. Um, and I think it's, it's the most fun as a reader to play along with because we see a lot of ourselves in those characters. Exactly. You know, I want it. And I, I, that's kind of the whole things. Like I want to see like, what's going to be your limit? Like, when do you cut off and say, you know what, maybe so-and-so is a bad person. You know what I mean? Like, what do you consider too far? Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited to see uh, what everyone says. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I'm curious because, so this is your first uh, full length book that you were getting published. Are, yeah. What made you decide to try and reach out to a publisher versus like self-publishing? Um, because I know that you are paired with someone right now, but uh, what was that process like? Um, so when I, first, so like I said, I had this book for about two or three years um, and I had some friends who were like alpha read before. Um, and then, you know, I got, got an editor and stuff and then just kind of progressed from there. But I was always going to do self-publishing um, and it wasn't anything like um, I, and this, I, this is not trying to sound pretentious at all, but it was never a thing where it's like, I don't feel like I get traditional published. It's just, I wanted control over my characters and my story. Um, and I've done research on both and I've heard like kind of horror stories when it comes to, you know, how much they're willing to change or like, you know, from there. And I just, I just didn't want that. Um, and so I ended up, you know, one of my friends <laughs> starts this whole publishing house and she's like, hey, I know you're doing this. Do you want to be with us? And I'm just like, say less. <laughs> So that's kind of how it all fell into place with like Rose and Star, because that's my publishing house. Um, and it's been so nice and they're so sweet and helpful. And because I know my brain can be chaotic. So I'm like, hey, let's do this and this. And they're like, okay, that works. You know, I'm like, it's it's great. It's great. I love it. So um, yeah, in a way, um, it'd be considered traditional publishing, but at the same time, I feel like it's um, I mean, we're just gonna we're all kind of starting from like the ground up a little bit, you know. That's so I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, but I just like having that sense of control. Like I don't have to change so-and-so's, you know, name or how his character is perceived or this, you know what I mean? Like I'm in control of the story, how I wanted it. You know what I mean? And I wanted a fantasy world with more diversity. That's literally what it came down to. I didn't want to change X, Y, and Z because that's more popular amongst whatever. Like we want to see all of ourselves in the worlds that we escape to or create, you know? Yeah, I think there's something so fun about being able to work with um, a publishing company that's kind of growing as you're growing, especially Mm -hmm. like how lucky that is that one of your friends was like, hey, we're going to create our own and we would love to have you on as a client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder um, what has their process been like with this? Have they been um, like enjoying kind of getting on their feet the same as you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's it's been fun. And like, I'll get the messages and stuff, but it's like, oh, I'm so excited for this we're doing, or I'm so excited for this, you know? And so, I don't know, every day it's just been, it sounds so cheesy, but I mean, every bit of it, but every day has been good. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't have that um, stress kind of on my shoulders where it's like, oh, I need to um, set up this and this to promote or whatever. Like they help with marketing, they help with like editing, like you name it, you know? And so um, just to have that peace of mind, um, was great but yeah and they have so many other works that are coming out besides my book that I'm just like it's a mix of everything I mean there's fantasy books are coming out with there they just released a mafia romance um it's a bunch of stuff and so I was just like guys I'm proud of you but you said you're proud of me but I feel like I'm more proud of you you know I feel like <laughs> so, it's awesome just to have feel like you have a team like feel like they're yeah. I think that's kind of I'm so curious of since you started to build a following on TikTok, how has it Mm -hmm. been to kind of have people cheering you on as you're writing before they've even like really read the book? What is that like? (laughs) I can't tell you how much I, I literally like same thing with you. Like I will text or message and I'm just like, guys, I literally appreciate you. I mean that with my whole heart because starting out whatever, I was just excited that my friends wanted to read. Like I'm excited to share with you guys, you know? And then I'll have people who I've never met or talked to are just like, oh, I want this. And I'm just like, do you? Oh my God, thanks. You know, like, 
I will be humble until the day I die, I swear. Um, there was a few people that I talked to on Instagram where I'm like, if you guys want to message me while you read, do it. Like, I'm not going to be that person who is just like, not there. Like, I don't know, like it's, you are taking time out of your busy, crazy life in this busy, crazy world to compliment a book that isn't even out yet. I will never be mean to you. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. This, it just means the absolute world to me. And like, I posted art today that just came out because one of my best friends, Talia, you know, we talked about commissioning and like the reception from that. I'm just like, I love you guys so much. <laughs> I feel like it's so, it's so exciting because there, it really is like, you know, that first off, you know, what book talkers like, you know, what readers like mm -hmm. because you are one. And then also mm -hmm. to just like get to interact with them on like a daily, even just like leading up to it. I feel like that had to encourage the writing and editing process as well. Yeah. It makes right. Well, it makes me excited for like book two. Cause I'm working on book two right now. Mm -hmm. Um, editing's getting, uh, is almost completely finished for book one. Um, so it just makes me excited to go back and read the stuff I've already wrote. Cause I'm like, I know so-and-so is going to like this because they like this stuff in their books or, you know what I mean? Like I know so-and-so is going to laugh at this part. So, uh, that definitely makes me happy. But, um, yeah, like I said, every day is just great because I have that, support system and I have those close friends and family and stuff um that are there like in my corner and it's like the littlest things it could be five people who will text me one day and I'm like I'm great for the rest of the week you know like yeah. I, I went into this blind I was just like hey I wrote this book and I know like you guys will like it do you want to read it and then it just went it went crazy <laughs> what has your relationship been like on the editing side like with the editing process do you are you one of those people who's like i read it i don't want to look at it anymore somebody just take it um or are you one who really likes to like weed through it as well um i definitely like to weed through it um i get in trouble because <laughs> with editing I'll go back while they're editing send it to me and I'm like oh I like this part can we add this and they're like Amber your word count is already high enough calm down and you so already like did all the all the work yeah. just, just yeah watch. the the perfectionist in me is just like okay but I like this let's add like a week you know like something and they're like don't touch anything so um yeah no editing's editing is great I'm glad that I have an editor that tells me just to chill or this book would never come out how did you connect with your editor? Is that from, was that from the, the Greek gods group that you kind of got to network? Yeah, with? yeah, actually it was. She um, was there. Um, she's still there too. Um, and then she's doing a lot of works for Rosenstar Publishing House. Um, and so we already have that like friendship. She already knows my writing style, um, my weaknesses, which, you know, girl, maybe comma splices, but it's a thing. Um, <laughs> um, but she already knows like, um, my style like my prose like how I how I write um and so that helps a lot and so when it comes to editing all she's doing is just shaping the words I already have because it's there and so it makes it it makes it fun you know and so um you get that hey let's change this and this but it's also this like positive reinforcement as well too which is detrimental to a writer you know like because we get that I mean you can tell us how to fix stuff and do whatever but um that little bit of kindness, even in the mix of fixing everything means the world. Cause we're hard on ourselves. Like you're an artist too. Like you could, you critique, like you're hard on yourself. Like, absolutely. I think I found like I was beta reading for someone uh, recently and I was reading their first draft and I was finding myself like reaching for things to critique because I was just like, so impressed with the writing. But mm -hmm. I was also like, you have, I have to remember to like write in things that I love too, because they'll look at this mm -hmm. and they'll only see the critiques, which is what I've nitpicked mm -hmm. for. But I know as an artist, you're like, this entire thing sucks when it's some of the mm -hmm. best writing I've ever read. Yeah. This. So it's kind of like, yeah, you definitely have to balance it out. Yeah. But I, I'm curious if like for your writing process, what is your favorite thing? thing to write about is it the romantic scenes is it the fights is it the tension like what are what do you get really excited like when you I, up? if I have to do like a top two <laughs> if I have to do a top two I love the fluff that you can put in the books because <laughs> you have like you know badass moments and I love the fighting but um, like those two are my favorite um because I feel like if you're gonna have like a high stakes book or something like you have to sprinkle in the little like cute moments you know and it's something that of course, intimacy with stuff and then um, making your characters grow. But yeah, no, I, I like that for sure. Um, dialogue's funny too. So no, absolutely. that's one of my favorite. 
I feel like I, like as a reader, like I always say, I'm not like a sappy person, but if mm-hmm. there's some good fluff in a book, I will absolutely scream while I'm reading mm-hmm. and I'll just like throw it across the room and I'll just be like, this <laughs> is too beautiful. You gotta, you gotta build the tension up before they go to, you know, where they're going to go. So, but yeah, no. But do you like write it. out like, um, like, are you someone who does a big over like view before in preparation or do you just sit down and start word vomiting? Um, a little bit of both. So I'm in the writing world. You have like a pantser and a plotter and I'm in the middle. Um, so I have a general idea, like say for example, the series, I know how the series is going to end. I have a general idea of what's going to happen in said books. Um, Wait, but at the same time, in a plotter. Mm-hmm. so you have people who will plot like okay. the outline. So you a, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then one, two, three in between. And then a panster who you just fly by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I'm totally in the middle where like, I have it plotted out at the same time. A lot of the stuff that I really didn't like in my book came to me like, you know, a day or so after I finished a chapter. And I was like, you know, this would be cool to add this, you know? Um, so a little bit of both, but um, I do have the notes on my phone is I have like two or 300 notes on my phone because that's where I'll get like, um, if I'm at work or doing something like you get inspiration, you just want to like write it down. So you have it. Um, so I do have like a general outline. I know what's going to happen and stuff, but a lot of it, you know, it'll be just inspired by that's cute, but what if they do this instead kind of thing? So definitely. Do you think that like when it comes to the world, are you someone who needs to almost write out the rules for the world beforehand or do you like do you have kind of like I don't know like a bible of your world kind of thing just yeah so that for sure is set in stone um and another thing that I learned with writing um which is one of my friends and stuff had told me too is you want to make sure that when you do write your world and you have these rules you stay by the rules because if you don't um everything you kind of develop kind of goes out the window. So if you say care, if you say in the world, there is no resurrection, you can't resurrect someone, you know what I mean? And not, and I know it's fantasy and stuff, but you want to have something that the brain can physically grab onto in some sort of like realism that they root it in. Um, and so like, yeah, like little rules like that. So it's like, um, it's not really a spoiler, but for example, with like the characters, like the gods or something that I made, like I want it to be where, yes, they're powerful and stuff, but they still have like a limit. So you have a thing where you burn out because just like, you know, I energy in itself, like you can't just keep, you know, burning, burning, burning without something happening kind of thing. So I wanted little tidbits like that. So in, in the case of the world, yeah, I have like rules and things they have to follow and stuff they have to do kind of thing. Um, and that has to stay. Um, but then when it comes to scenes or something that can change a little bit sure do you now what what tropes can we expect in this you know Uh, (laughs) book talk seems to be (laughs) tropes so don't don't give don't give spoilers per se but if you had Mm -hmm. to say like a couple tropes that you're like people will be satisfied with this what what are we looking at um so for book one i have the enemies to lovers of course but i always call like mortal enemies to lovers because they don't like each other since all the time um forbidden love um one bed trope you know (laughs) just like check cool i'm reading (laughs) cool yeah um i'm trying to think uh i think maybe that'd be it for book one Hey, I don't know. It depends. We, we I mean, it. bad female characters, not like, is that a trope? I don't know if that's a trope. Is that a trope? Yeah. Bad female, like badass female character kind of thing. Um, hero villain type thing, I guess. But um, yeah, I think that's it for book one. I have to, I had a list, girl. I don't got it right now, but I had a list of like what tropes I had. <laughs> have you, um, like for you, what was important when you were writing this? I know that you talked a lot about that Kind of morally gray edge where where you kind of like turn around and you're like that's too villainous I'm not okay with this or like this is someone mm-hmm. I can get 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 along with or I can relate to was that the most important thing for you to get across with this story or what was the, like the thing that really meant the most to you with this one um honestly the thing that meant the most to me is just having more representation when it comes to fantasy because I have a high you know, mix of diversity in the book. And that was important to me because I wanted to have people that look like me or my family in there. Um, 
and not say any of the characters are based off like me or my family, but like, I just wanted more of that. So like, if my cousins read it or my friends read it and something like you do see it, you know, and that was kind of a big thing for me, especially if I wanted this like fantasy world in general. Um, but I feel like nowadays we're slowly getting into that where you see more, like a more diverse cast and stuff. So I like that, but um, I really just wanted a badass, uh, power couple that wasn't just the same you know generic kind of thing we've done for like the last 20 plus years you know um and that's not me bashing any of the books before because you know I love them um but yeah that was pretty much it and then like I said I just wanted a different take on the whole hero villain thing um and then a different take on what you consider a villain because in the long run, which, you know, people will probably agree or disagree, the whole series is literally about, like, um, this villain story in general, like, um, and you decide if that makes them bad or not, because what, what I see as a villain, someone else may see, like, they're misunderstood, <laughs> you know, so it really just depends, but I don't know, I wanted more of that, because, I mean, we see it in movies and TV shows and stuff, but not really in books. So. Oh, I agree with that. I think that just like, it sounds like something that's really important to you. And then also I agree like to me as well, it's just making sure that characters reflect our reality in whatever mm -hmm. way that looks like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And especially with like the way that you might relate to a character or you might be like, oh no, 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 that's them going too far. It's just fun mm -hmm. to like play with that line. Yeah. No, absolutely. See what you're going to get. <laughs> And what about when you, when you were writing this, were there any stories that you particularly took, you know, inspiration from? Were there any authors that you particularly were inspired by? Uh, my favorite author of all time is Janine Frost. And I don't think she gets enough recognition on like TikTok and stuff, but she is the one that I read. I've read all her books like at least three or four times. And hers isn't really fantasy. It's more like magic realism, which is, you know, like the urban setting, but with like vampires and stuff. Um, and so hers was really good because like, you know, she was the first one I read where you had this badass main character who's like this half vampire named Kat. Um, and then like her boyfriend future husband bones and stuff in there and it was just a fun dynamic to read because it's like they're powerful they can do it together and like you know she had like eight plus books of them so that was cool um kind of like the dark brotherhood series a little bit like say, yes, but, like, very familiar. janine frost is that who i have to look up yeah okay. oh my god you'll love her and like she was the first one i read that had like this snark and like the female main character like cusses this guy out i'm like Ish, i love her um <laughs> so yeah and that but then a lot of my stuff comes from from just how I grew up so like I take you know inspiration from like Marvel because I love that um and then we used to play video games all the time so you get that kind of that kind of storytelling when you know like say like Skyrim or something where they have like this oh this scroll existed 17,000 years ago but it like told of the fall or whatever like you know what I mean like that type of stuff so um yeah just a little bit here and there from stuff that I've grown up with that I can like make into my own world kind of thing and not yeah. go from there you know yeah, I feel like uh, it's just fun to play around with, especially yeah. with, like um, uh, you were talking about Marvel f fight scenes and I've been finding mm -hmm. that my favorite thing to read is just like people either fighting or training to fight. Like you just- Yeah, we love training scenes. I really do, I'm just <laughs> is like- Is that a trope? <laughs> I, that I a feel trope? like it is. I've decided okay, that- that's not, But I can put that as a trope in there too. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, no. Is Training to fight mm -hmm. is probably the best form of foreplay that yeah. anyone has ever invented. Uh -huh. And I, I was just like, I <laughs> think that is what I want to see in all of my books now. So mm -hmm. I'm glad. I'm that training you. Okay. Why are you standing that close? You're not, what are you training? Yep. <laughs> no. say, you really like the, the that's a, going on here? Yeah. Hey, that's another form of intimacy in its own way, because you okay. want to help this person enough to train them in close proximity. So, oh, force proximity. There you go. There's another trope. See, it just had to fall off my brain. It's getting there. Uh, yeah, we like that. Okay, you're doing great. I was about to, yeah, whenever we, someone's just like, hey, what tropes are going on? It's like, um, um, yeah. um. Ugh. I don't even know my name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but speaking of though, with things of surprising us, um, what was the mm -hmm. biggest surprise that you had while writing this or what like biggest surprise um, yourself about that this? my characters don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> and I mean that in my whole heart. I'm sorry. Because what? Literally, literally there's like X, Y, Z has to happen for this to happen at the end of the book. And then I'm like, no, don't do this. And it's like, nothing else will flow because 
and this sounds like you're talking to Grace, but nothing else will flow because it, they wanted to go this way, which ends up flowing better. But still, I'm like, that's not what I saw, but I'm into it kind of thing. So like, there was a plan here. We were on mm -hmm. the road and you took a deep yeah. before, but like, we'll go with it. No legit when you read i'll just text me and i'll tell you the exact part i'm talking about and you'll be like oh okay that makes sense <laughs> okay definitely. Um, do you yeah. find, I mean, you you have written this while having a whole other full-time job yeah i know i'm so tired <laughs> how, how are you doing this when do you find time to write what yeah what how do you do that um, I don't know, honestly. Um, I literally, <laughs> I'll work from like eight to six or something and like, it'll be there like all week or whatever my schedule is. Um, it's in, I, I don't know. So I feel like I make time and I want to make time. And so you have that. And like, it's kind of that whole, what was that phrase that people used to say all the time? It's like, if you care about something or someone you make time for, and that's kind of what it boils, boils down to. Um, writing for me, regardless, is a little bit therapeutic um, because it's like, it's fun. You know, you get those thoughts out and stuff. And then it can be kind of cathartic, just like reading, um, depending on what subject matter you're talking about, you know? Um, and so it's something that I enjoy that it sounds funny, but it is a de-stressor for me. Like if I don't write or something, I feel like I'm more stressed out than I am if I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so I do have time. Um, I can't do like six chapters for sure, but <laughs> at least go back and do something here and there. So um, I think it's just more so me, I like to stay busy. So something, <laughs> something fun. Are you, all, are you the kind of person who like, is like, I need to write for at least like 30 minutes a day, or is it more of like, I, is it not quite as like rigid as that? Um, no, I don't, I don't like to set time limits or anything like that, because then I feel like it becomes more of a chore, if that makes sense. And not bashing anyone that does it, because that, that's like saying, um, like one of my friends is really good at organizing and she has like planners and stuff and that works for her and it helps her and she likes it. Um, where I can't do that because I feel like uh, one, I would, I just don't want to do it, but still, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I, I don't want to be the one that's like, I have to write 20,000 words a day or else I'm going to be mad. Like I'll just write or something. Um, but I do, I'm, I do, in a sense, put time and I was like, hey, I got off at like seven o'clock. I don't open tomorrow. I have a few hours to write. And so I'll do that. Yeah, no, I find that with that's like why I can't I've never really had success with either running or being a part of a book club because mm -hmm. I the thought of having like an assigned reading throws me mm -hmm. off completely. It's why I can't. <laughs> I'm just like, just let me have my own space to read whatever I want. You can't hold me mm -hmm. down. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I just like, it, it, I will purposely not read it because I feel like it's being assigned to me. Mm -hmm. No, I totally get that. I have a lot of friends who have Discord servers and I'm like, I, I have enough. I can't keep up with everything. I'm sorry. No, absolutely. Um, so, but I totally get it. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about your hopes for this book and moving forward. If you have, if this looks like a series to you, I know you said you were working at the second book already. So what, what yeah. do you see for this? Um, so I do have a series planned um, for it in general. The only thing is I don't know how many it's going to be. In my brain, I'm thinking six because just how big the world is itself. Um, but it may change to five. It just depends. But uh I don't know. I mean, like I said, regardless, it's fun for me. It's something that helps me too. And um, I just hope other people enjoy it. Um, like I said, I, I feel like I know for sure my friends and stuff will, but um, if that has its own growing, then more, I'd be happy regardless, honestly. But um, yeah, uh, I'm almost done with book two, not editing or anything. And then like, I want to start on book three and just, that's my momentum. Like I just keep going like that and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Are you, do you find that you kind of push things through TikTok when you can? Do you enjoy making like teasers and things for your book or mm -hmm. like, is that something is that, that you like obligated to? Oh no, I like to do it when I can. <laughs> and so like, I feel like, so um, like I said, I'll post maybe one TikTok and they'll disappear for a week. And it's not because I don't want to be there. It's just, I'm busy. <laughs> and so I come back and I'm like, oh, wait, I want to show you guys this. So um, yeah, no, it's fun. And I like to do it because like I said, I like to engage with um, the people that are there and stuff too. So, um, but yeah, when I can, 
Um, I'll post more stuff. I have a bunch of teasers that are coming out in February that I've already like pre-made that my publishing house did. Um, and I can't wait to start sharing those, but yeah, all of it's fun. I mean, it has to be, if you're not having fun, what's the point of doing anything really? <laughs> right. And I kind of feel like people can tell, like it, it just comes across in the video. If you're not enjoying it, or if you don't want to be creating it, like people kind of know, I, you mm -hmm. know? And so I, yeah. I think that's why I always say, whenever I talk to authors, I'm always just like, the only time I think you should be on TikTok is if you love TikTok, like be mm -hmm. on it if you enjoy doing it. And if you don't, mm -hmm. then you don't need to. Yeah. I like the little sounds they come out with, you know, and um, there's been so many times I've found so many that I want to use. And I'm like, Amber, your book's not even out yet. You're just spoiling stuff. So I just saved them. And I'm like, maybe I'll do it later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. Are there any, um, are there any authors like on book talk that you're looking out for right now or anybody that you uh, Raven know? Kennedy, I didn't even let you finish talking. I am so sorry. <laughs> you're fine. You I, <laughs> I freaking love Raven Kennedy, the whole Plated Prisoner series. Have you yep. read that yet? I, uh, I love it. Okay. And check trigger warnings. That's my, there's, there's my little, uh, thing, but I freaking love her one. She's so sweet. Um, and so, uh, Kaven is actually the one that got me into the Plated Prisoner series because she'd posted about it. Um, and I've been reading those books. I'm trying to get her new hardbacks too. Uh, but yeah, uh, obsessed to say the least. She has a book coming out in May. I was like, started counting down. I'm already counting down. <laughs> those are those the new like the white and gold uh hard yeah. those are gorgeous mm -hmm. I they saw are. those and I was like oh my gosh mm -hmm. no I'm obsessed and you can get them in like Barnes and Noble and everything and I'm like I haven't got paid yet girl but when I do <laughs> Where are you going yeah. What about for other um, other book talkers, like other people who have started on book talk? Are, are there any people that you follow that you're like, you know, that they're writing that you're like, I'm excited to read their book? I got a list. Yes. Um, so Caven Books, which, you know, she does the Akatar funny um, Cassian ones. I cannot wait for her book. Um, she has not told me a title yet, but she'll better. Um, so I can't wait for hers. Hers is a fantasy based too. And like the two people can't touch. And I'm like, say less tension galore yeah. um stacy um i'm gonna butcher her last name but you know her on uh tiktok yeah ledge is coming out i'm excited for that hannah hannah that villain to assistant owns my life oh yeah <laughs> i can't wait for that I one can't wait for that us. one no um i feel like i'm missing someone someone's in my brain i just can't think right now um but no i can't wait for hers either and then i want um Emma to write a book she said she might be doing a novella and it's uh, I want her to do like a romance mafia one um she's the one that always talks about Ice Planet Barbarians especially yeah. when it first popped off and so like I messed her one day and I was like if you write a small like love smutty novella just know I'm gonna buy it <laughs> I'm, for that. Yeah. I'm I am the most supportive person I will buy anything <laughs> like Perfect. what do you need what are you doing tell me about your life Maggie if you write a book sold <laughs> don't even tell me what it's about I'll buy it <laughs> I, know, I feel like I've seen a lot of people write it on TikTok I'm like is this is this a sign and I was like no no, no I'll just keep making videos and buying stuff for everybody <laughs> um but um, I mean well you're gonna be a super actress I've already I've already manifested that so I'll just buy I'll just buy all like you know streaming services I can whatever okay. you're gonna be on yeah, Netflix just, make sure you get them all and that way no yeah. matter where it, it lands you exactly it. exactly I'm prepared um and just kind of like wrapping up a little bit but I kind of just want to know where can we find this book? What what can we um, do to support you? All of the, well, like, when can we expect it? All those things. Um, so it's coming out March 29th. Um, I have links and stuff in like my bio on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, and you can get it pretty much Amazon. Um, you can get it at Barnes and Noble. I have paperback, hardback, and a Kindle version too. So just oh, yeah. everything a little bit. Um, and we just got a new supplier, I think is what they were telling me. So the price dropped recently, um, just because it's a big book. <laughs> and I, I was just like, oh, Wait, is it really? Um, the last time I checked, it was like 700, but I think it's closer to like five or something now with formatting, like nothing's dropped or changed. Like I didn't like take anything out, but I think with like formatting and stuff, we're a little bit closer to like 500, but 
yeah <laughs> that's one of my favorite length though i always think i'm like 300 is mm. a little too small and when i get up to like eight or 900 we're looking at like the priory of the orange tree so like mm -hmm. 500 is like that sweet spot yeah <laughs> you want to you're still in merch you're still there and then you're like wait let's do this again read it read it over <laughs> okay. wait so okay and how can we how can we support you like what what do you need from us can we follow you on all your stuff we obviously get it but yeah. let us know if there's anything else you want us to know about the book um just follow and share honestly the i mean i've had a lot of people who will post stuff on like their stories or make videos and stuff which is supporting regardless but it's so fun to see though so you know i know it's kind of more impossible since nothing's really out out yet but um still it helps and it's just like i said you put a lot of work into <clears throat> any type of art you do um and even if you have five to ten supporters that share on there that means the absolute world you know that's it like legit the so littlest things and it can make someone's whole day, you know, so. Yeah, I think even when I see people just like mention me in something or comment me in something, I'm like, oh, you're thinking of me, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you, yeah, you've taken over with the Brotherhood series. One of my uh, followers that I'm on there was like, yeah, so Maggie said, I was like, I love Maggie. <laughs> I mean, the only thing she talks about is the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. She'll, mm -hmm. she'll finish soon and then she'll go to something else. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for, you know, just giving me some time to hang out and chat about yeah, your Yeah, I had fun. <laughs> yeah, no, this has been great. And um, everybody, if you'd like to see more of these videos and hear from more authors, feel free to, you know, like, subscribe, comment anybody that you would like to hear me interview, um, mostly highlighting those book talk and emerging authors. So yeah, that's going to be it today, guys. See ya.